that's not a knife. That's a knife. Oh, sorry, I just had to do it. Anyway, hello there. Welcome to another Starfield video. Today we're going to be taking a look at six melee weapons uh, that I think you should try out. I say try out, but some of them, yeah, some of them no. So we got, there's there's more than six, there's about seven or eight melee weapons, but I kind of highlighted some of the more interesting ones. So we'll start off with uh, the Barrow Knife, which is uh, a melee weapon. And just going by the style of it, it looks very much like a Bowie Knife. Now, it's not 100% like a Bowie Knife. It has uh, those weird cuts in it. I don't know if that's like an artistic choice. Or maybe like maybe it's not actually a Bowie Knife. I know Bowie Knives generally, they've got the wooden handle. And then they've got the big kind of blade on it. Uh, so let me know if I got this wrong. Uh, it's damage of 23. Now, it doesn't really have any other stats, which is kind of sad. Um, even in, like, Fallout and Skyrim, well, Fallout games, you have, like, your swing speed and stuff like that. Now, obviously, these weapons swing. They have swing speeds and stuff, but yeah. So, another thing to note is that none of these weapons I'm going to be looking at today can be modified, which is, again, a bit of a weird one, considering that in Fallout 4 and 76, and that was the most recent iteration of uh, Bethesda's games, you could heavily modify a lot of the melee weapons. So yeah, so we're going to go try them out anyway. Uh, I'm playing on very hard difficulty. This is going to be interesting because I don't have any perks. You know, let me just confirm. Um, I'm playing on very hard. And I don't have any perks in melee weapons. So that if I was to do that, uh, melee weapons would do more damage. I mean, potentially could be good. Melee weapons heal you. That's actually kind of cool. Anyway, let's, yeah, let's go, uh, let's go check it out, shall we? All right, we are here. Right, uh, quick save before I'm just because there's no modification. I can just kind of go in there. So the usual spot. I'm resisting the urge to do really bad Australian impressions. Impressions of uh, Mr. Dundee. By Mr. Dundee, I mean Crocodile Dundee, not uh, what Michael calls Tycho in the, the Discord. Hello there, gentlemen. Uh, flashbacks to playing Morrowind. Okay, yeah. As you can see, it's 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 a knife. It's a pointed object that has stabbing potential. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if the thing is, if you had the if you had the perk, you'd be doing more damage. But like, realistically, I feel like melee weapons in general, you have to rely heavily on you have to rely heavily on um, on like chems and stuff. Like, I know there's chems that increase your melee and stuff, which again, it's that might be a kind of a way to go about it. Uh, personally, for me, I'm not a huge fan of kind of candy stuff. Not that I don't mind them, but just, I just always forget about them. Now, this is where another kind of issue with uh, melee. Can't reach that target. Obviously, you have the heavy weapon with the melee, which I have bound to my RB button because I think on Xbox it was bound to. I think it was, I don't know what it was bound to on uh, Xbox. I think it was like the right stick. It's like me and playing cop. As you can see, heavy attack does minimal damage. You're better off with the light attack just because you can swing faster. Don't have a lot of high hopes for these melee weapons, like I said. No attachments, no nothing. But maybe if you were to rock cans, because they're like a. Alright, so that's that's enough of this. It, it's a cool, 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 bit, cool side piece from a roleplay point of view. Definitely, if you're out hunting, you could pull this out after downing a creature and, you know, roleplay that you're going to cut its hide apart for materials if you're into that. But yeah, let's on to the next weapon. All right, next on the list, we got the combat knife, which is got a lot lighter. It's got a lot less damage. So as you can see, the physical damage were less. Now, I'm assuming just going by the fact it's a lot lighter, it's, it's going to kind of swing faster. If I was to make an assumption, I'd say this is like kind of like the standard uh, knife of the U UC military forces, and then this is probably like the standard knife of the Freestar, just going off it. I will say I like the look of it, although that, that finger hole looks a bit awkward. I've had a couple of knives, a couple of cheap knives that have that. He's not even holding it by the finger hole. Well, maybe that might not actually be a thumb hole or a finger hole at all. That might be something entirely different for like some sort of survival aspect. That might be why the one I had. Bought like a really cheap knife for kind of outdoorsy stuff and it had something similar. And every time I held it, like my finger in there, it hurt. But then I'm not a very outdoorsy person, so. Okay, so this, this initially, okay, that, 
Initially, this thing seems to swing quicker, but it seems like there's a kind of a cooldown on the swing. So like, as you can see, like, initial kind of two, it's like a cut cut. So there, there seems to be three animations. You've got your stab, your slash. You've got your slash straight across, your slash down. Which, it is weird that there's a kind of a delay. Now, it seems like that the sideways slashes seem to have some sort of a... I don't really know. It, it looks like it has more of a more of a kind of a stagger effect, which is interesting. The other one didn't. So, as you can see, the... Oh. I don't know if that's the knife knocking the weapon out of their hand. I have a perk that if I attack while not ADSing, I can knock them. It might be, though. As you can see, that like final cut in the animation, that like slash from the top right seems to stun, which is interesting. This one seems to be more, more better, but then even then, I don't know, we'll do a little. The heavy attack is also the same, it's just a kind of a grab the knife. It's um, see. I feel like this is a common trope with like movies and stuff, like, you know, to grab the knife and slash. But, like, maybe someone should have thought this guy that stabbing quickly would have made a lot more sense. Like, he does the stab initially, but yeah, but then I suppose it is a game. It's meant to be kind of more flashy. So, to me, I'd be, like, kind of aiming for the weak points in this guy's arm or, like, trying to hit him under the arm. Or, like, the, the crotch. Although, maybe not the crotch. That seems like a crime against the Geneva Convention. Never stab someone in the crotch. That would hurt. I'm possibly killed him. I'm, uh, moving on uh, to our next weapon. <laughs> All right, next on the list, we have the Rescue Axe. This is probably one of my favorite looking weapons in the game. Um, I like the red kind of aesthetic, and it's obviously meant to be a kind of, again, a very survival tool, but more so, it seems like it's more so designed for like kind of survival on ships. Like you've got uh, a spike on the back there. You've got what looks to be like a leveraging point. You've got that big blade. Really, really cool. Again, uh, physical damage of 18. So yeah, let's let's see how it performs. We'll do a quick uh we'll do a quick slash test before we go in. So Okay, so we've got Okay, so we got a uh, three downward slashes. Oh, Simeon! My bad, my bad, sorry. Okay, interesting. So weirdly this seems faster than the knife, which I mean, technically speaking, it's a larger object, so it would have more centrifugal... Is that the word? Centrifugal force at the tip? Maybe it's longer? Is that... No, that's not the word. You know, I just realized, last time I didn't kill that guy either, it was Sibby. But, you know, I brought him here just to try and aggro the enemies, because I felt like the, uh... Okay. Seems like all of the attacks have a stagger attack, stagger, stagger chance. Obviously with enemies, enemies have like a stagger immunity, so you can't keep them staggered indefinitely. But as you can see, you can... Well, you can kind of. Again, I think the big thing that lets this down is no attachments. Like, it's very much in line with how Fallout does it, if they allowed you to have like a flaming uh, add-on. Or like an electric add-on or you know like maybe like mix it with like some alien like dna or like blood to make an acidic damage like it's, it's you know the the basis is there but i don't know why you didn't incorporate it. again with melee weapons you could definitely kind of do a lot better but i don't like the idea of having to kind of use a specific build just to make a weapon good obviously if you want to make weapon gods there's definitely ways So again, knocks it out of his hand. I think that's just a base ability. Okay. The gun. Yeah, you can. You can hit the gun, which is kind of cool. 
my guy. Unless those fists are made of, like, goddamn Beskar, you're not blocking an axe with those. It's, all in all, it's, again, it's, it's very much a, it, I feel like it's more of a roleplay sort of item, like, the sort of thing your character would carry if they're, like, a ship pilot and they're not really a, I could say, like, a, they're not very, like, you know, if you're roleplaying, like, kind of a commercial pilot or maybe, like, something like that, where you're not going to get into a lot of combat, it's handy to have just, just in case you crash and you might need to, like, split some, some wires or open a bulkhead. But yeah, let's, uh, check the next one, shall we? Alright, now we got a coolish one. This is the UC Naval Cutlass. Again, another United Colonies weapon. Now, it, to be honest with you, it looks less like a cutlass and more like a machete. So, initially I thought it, it might have been just a ceremonial thing, but looking at it, and given how, like, space works, or space combat is, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, you see, like, say, like, Marines or, like, some UC shock troopers would opt to have this instead of a shotgun. Just because, you know, it'd be one of the, probably the best way to incapacitate someone in space, you know? You jab them through this, it's clean, it's efficient, you don't have to worry about, like, any rounds going behind the target and blowing out a bulkhead or a round of space. But yet again, it's go we're going to have to see how it... No modifications. So we got a swing. Oh. Okay, so we got a, kind of a, a, a sideways slash... And then, a, oh, whoops. And then opposite, and then a straight down, like an uppercut. And then we, oh, we've got a jab. Very nice. I like this. As somebody who likes using spears in uh, games, I love when you can kind of use the, the length of the weapon to kind of poke your opponents. It would be interesting if, like, because, like, realistically, well, I don't know too much about the ins and outs of how the space suits work in this game, but it's only a couple of hundred years in the future. You know, there's not like none of the none of the, the NPCs are rocking like Miljorn armor from Halo. Um, so I could imagine like a bladed weapon this long would be very devastating. Like imagine going like straight under somebody's arm. Like obviously you wouldn't even be intending on killing them with the with the with the, the blow. It'd be more so exposing their body to the vacuum of space. This seems to be a lot more effective. Um. Okay, no, that was against a higher level opponent. Did I slash the back of that? I just thought I saw a slash on the back of that. That's kind of cool if I can. Yeah, yeah, get him, get him. Is this, is, this is more satisfying to use. Again, it, it seems like it has a... The poke is kind of pointless. It seems to have way more stagger. It's almost like every hit will stagger as long as they're not immune to staggering. I feel like I'm, uh, I'm cutting through like the brush in like, the Amazon jungle. This one. Even with the Perth 2, what is it? It increases your damage by 50%. It's it's not going to do a lot. Now, I will say that the heal on, on, is it heal on hit or heal on kill? Let me check. Oh, no, it's melee kills. No, never mind. That would be absolutely pointless. You'd have to rock, probably have to rock some really good gear. Anyway, we're going to jump to the next one. All right, so now we're on to something that does significantly more damage. This is the House Faroon Pain Blade, and as you can see, the damage, when comparing to everything else, it's absolutely colossal. Now, I'm judging just if you look how the uh, the blade has like a kind of an effect on it, it could just be it could just be like a like just a kind of a Damascus style, but it also could be infused with something which might make it seem why it does so much damage. It's a very interesting weapon. House Rune are kind of known for that sort of like, you know, their gear is powerful. Um, is that a... Like, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of energy source inside here. But yeah, so let's, let's go try this out. So, 
the way he attacks with it is quite interesting. It's he, wielding it like a knife, which I honestly I probably would have wielded if I if I had like first looking at it, I would have probably wielded it the other way. With like the big the big kind of um blade kind of like you know like um upside down basically. So you can kind of slash a little bit better. I don't know if it's just the animation, but it looks like he kinda as he brings the knife, he like cuts downward like he's kinda like trying to hack in. So again, animation wise, it just looks a bit like a reskin of the um the other knives that we shall see. I think it would have been cool if this was like one of those weapons where like it was you wield it a little differently. Like House Rune, you know, they're like zealots, so they'd be trained in a you know where did you go? Hello. As you can see, this this chunks a lot more damage off enemies. If you're looking like if you're actually going the route of a melee build, this is probably one of the the weapons, one of the only weapons you want to go for. But saying that, it still has this thing where it just feels very. I don't know, it just feels very slow. Like, there was a perk in Fallout, and there's also, I'm pretty sure Skyrim has a two depending on weapon, where you can basically increase your swing speed. And I feel like with a lot of these weapons, it would be nice to be able to do that. Like, hell, Skyrim had, I mean, Skyrim had no guns, necessarily. But there was, like, loads of different perks for different, like, weapons, from one-handed, two-handed axes, all this. So I would, I feel like... Bethesda might need to kind of, you know, overhaul some of these in the future, which they probably will. Just given that, you know, they're currently a bit... It, is, it, 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 it works, though. It is a melee weapon. Probably one of the only ones to do. Alright, and finally on the list, we have the Wakasashi. Um, it's 51 damage. Uh, I believe it is It is a samurai sword, but I the term, I feel like, samurai sword is very vague. Is it, um, I, it looks like your kind of standard samurai sword, like a katana. Um, I taught Waka, 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 my, my, my pronunciation. I taught a Waka Sashi was like a smaller one. It might be. Again, the, the animation, it, it has the jab. It's sharing the animation from the Cutlass, which from Bethesda's point of view, like, they're just trying to kind of, you know, they're trying to save on cost, but I think it'd be kind of cool if, um, if you kind of maybe swung a little bit differently. I feel like katanas are supposed to be very precise weapons, very much slashing and stuff, which it does that. I don't know if you guys ever watched, um, there was a, it was like, um, like a TV show on documentary, and it was, like, basically about, like, they pitted two ancient, like, medieval forces against one another, and they would, like, look at their weapons and armor. It was very much dramatized, lot of stuff. I remember it was, like, samurai versus viking, potentially, or something. And the samurai guy was like, yeah, samurai sword, very powerful. And then they're like, well, try it against chainmail. And it couldn't, couldn't penetrate chainmail. But then obviously, samurai sword wasn't designed for that. It was designed to fight, you know, in its, its, uh, in its uh, Japan and that kind of era where they didn't really, I don't believe they used chainmail. They were more, they had their, their own types of armor. All in all, it's a bit like, it's definitely like the uh, cross between the axe and the uh, pain blade. Oh, poke in the head. Okay. Even the crits, like the... Oh, that hurt. How did I do 193 damage? I don't know what determines your crit. The po I will say, the poking is satisfying. But yeah, all in all, like, these, these are pretty cool weapons, but they're clearly there more from a roleplay point of view, which is perfectly fine. If you're playing on a lower difficulty and you want to, like, roleplay as a character to use in one of these, you want to be like... Uh, I was going to say Tom Hanks' his last samurai, but it wasn't Tom Hanks, it was Tom Cruise. Uh, if you want to be like that sort of thing, or, you know, you want to be uh, a shiv-wielding maniac, you know, 
I'd lower the difficulty. Hopefully Bethesda kind of looks in the future update, they go back and kind of fix some of these weapons. Because while they're cool to look at, they are very much on the on the weaker. Hello there. I'm just going to kill you real quick. See what he has. You never know. Oh, he had a, oh, he had a knife. Nice. But yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. It's a shorter one than usual. Uh, thanks for watching. Tune in next week, and we will have the final episode, uh, I believe, of this kind of miniseries, where we look at the thrown weapons, which will be very interesting, because I have not used any of the thrown weapons. Thrown weapons. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys.